welcome to another discussion session on a topic relating to the wire rope industry. Uh, today I'm joined by Owen. Hi Pete. Hi Owen. And we're here to discuss the complicated topic of rope grades. Um, so uh, before we get on to that, quick introduction to Owen. Um, Owen is one of our application specialists uh, based out of our Doncaster head office. Um, Owen has over 30 years of experience within the wire rope industry um, and he uh, covers a number of sectors at Bride and Beckar, including oil and gas, fishing and crane and industrial. So the um, topic of today, as I say, is rope grades um, and it's a, a rather complicated one. So the first question is, Owen, what is a rope grade and how are they used? Oh, right, Pete. So, so rope grade is a, is a term used in, um, in the international standards for the rope industry and is a way of uh, sort of grouping, classing ropes to, together. See here we've got 1960 grade and, and 2160 grade, which are just two examples of grades that we, that we use within the rope industry. There also within, within that is a requirement of breaking force as well. So, so within that rope grade, there will be a requirement that we need to achieve a breaking force um, with that. So just as an example, I can show you here some, some different diameters of, uh, of the Diform 8PI product. And if we go across the table, we can come across to the to braking loads here, which we've got in kilonewtons, uh, short tons and, uh, and, and metric tons. Um, the 1960 grade is usually just slightly lower than the, than the 2160 grade uh, braking load here on, the, on this side. So that's the sort of area that we're looking at with the braking load and hopefully through the session we'll, uh, we'll cover that in a bit more detail and explain it in a bit better uh, detail as well. So does a higher grade necessarily mean a higher strength of rope? No, not necessarily, no. No, with the grading system um, we've got tolerances at the lower end and, and the upper, upper end of the, of the grading system. So for example here, a 1960 grade, you can see that we can go down to, to 1770 with the wire tensile strength and up to 2160 at the top end of the, of the tolerance there. So it's quite a wide banding. If you look at the 2160, we can actually go down to 1960, but we can't go any higher than the 2160. Although within the tensile grade tolerance, um, tolerances, you can actually go higher with those. Uh, with those. So by going higher, um, you're going to get probably a higher braking strength, um, but that might not be what you need for your system. Your system might need to have uh, very good bend fatigue, or it might need to have um, uh, an application where you're using the rope in a hot temperature, such as a steel mill. So by going for a higher um, tensile uh, strength or a higher tensile grade, it would mean that you're not going to get perhaps as, as good service life out of that rope. By, by doing that. So, so yeah, so going high is not always the, the best thing to do with a, with the rope grading system. Thanks, Ian. So um, we've, got, we've got details here um, of IPS, EIPS, EIPS, and then numbers. The, these are the American and the European versions yeah. of essentially the same thing. Yeah, that's right, yeah. yeah. So we have two different versions. We've got the sort of European international standards which use these, uh, these numbers here. Um, we're just showing three grades here, but there is lower. Um, and then we've got the North American system here, which uses the, uh, the ploughed steel. So the improved ploughed steel, which you can see at the top, would be the same as the 1770. And the, the extra, ex, extra improved ploughed steel would be the same as the 1960. And then the extra, extra improved ploughed steel is the, uh, is the 2160 there. And they're both, or all of them, should I say, have got the same or similar uh, banding that you're allowed within, within each one because different ma rope manufacturers can use different gradings for the, for the base of the same rope. So it could be that you're looking for a, a 20 millimeter rope. One rope manufacturer may say for this certain braking load you, you're using this grade. Another rope manufacturer may say for, for this braking load, well, we're using a, a higher grade or a lower grade. So it is still quite confusing with the, with the, with the grading system. So really, yeah, come and talk to us and we can help on that. To, um, decision making. So something already complicated is in some ways made more complicated by, by our industry. It is, yes, yes, and because of the wide banding of the, of the tolerances it, uh, it, it makes it quite, quite complex and that's where you need to sort of know your application and be able to then um, look at what's, what's the best um, for you. Like we're saying, going for the high braking load is not always the best thing to, to do because it might not be the best um, um, way for your rope to use to be used and to, to get the most life out of your rope as well. Excellent. So, I mean, obviously we talked a lot about grades here. How are these grades actually sort of guaranteed uh, and, and, and certified? 
Well, they're guaranteed through, um, through inspection of the, the certification that's provided with the rope. So when you get your certificate, you'll be able to see that you've got a rope grade specified on there. And then you're looking at the braking load that you've requested with the, with the certificate as well. And by cross-matching those two, that would be a way of, uh, of checking that you've got what you, what you needed for the rope. As, as rope manufacturers, we're quite new, unique in that we break every single rope that we manufacture. So we make a, a long length, we take a, a sample length, we pull it to destruction and we can then provide you with an actual breaking load of that rope which will always be above the, um, the minimum breaking load for the, for the rope. So you can also check by, by that as well. And even going back into the wire certificates that we're using within the ropes um, as well, which you, you could check if you wanted to do for those. Excellent. Thank you again, Owen. Um, so I'm a wire rope user and, uh, you know, whilst we're trying to bring clarity to this, it is a complicated area. Are there any sort of tips or, or um, uh, shortcuts to, to, to help people uh, apply this in a, on a day-to-day -day basis? Yeah, well, I would say get to know your, your crane or your system that you, the rope is operating on because with that, they'll, they'll be telling you what uh, minimum braking load you need for your, uh, for your crane. Don't try and chase for, for a very high braking load. There's, there's no need to do that. Um, so, so go for the braking load that you need. Um, and then looking at the, the tensile grade as well. And, and again, don't push for a higher tensile grade if you don't need to do. Go with what's, um, what's, what's recommended or what the, the rope manufacturer has. And, and come and talk to us and we can, we can give you some advice on, um, on what we would suggest is the best um, rope grade that you can use for your application. That's great. Thank you, Owen. Like all of these uh, uh, sessions, um, and in a complex area like rope grades, what we've done is we've created a bulletin to try and help explain uh, the, uh, the issue um, around rope grades. Uh, if you'd like a copy of the, um, uh, the bulletin, or alternatively you'd like to get in touch with one of our application specialists, please use the email uh, displayed on screen at this moment in time, and we will get in touch with either the bulletin or contact details of the relevant specialist. Thank you very much for your time in watching this briefing. I hope it's been useful in your day-to-day -day work with wire ropes. Thank you.